So I'm here with Professor Judy Campisi from the Bach Institute for Research on Aging, located in Novato, California, and we are attending the Undoing Aging Conference of the year 2019, and the professor has kindly agreed to uh, grant us an interview. So, um, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Um, so, going to the questions, there currently seems to be a growing sense of optimism among researchers regarding doing something about aging. What has changed in the last few years to encourage this? Oh, the tools of cell and molecular biology. So there are experiments that are being done now mm -hmm. that when I was a graduate student and even a postdoc were considered impossible. And now we have so many tools to explore cells and, mm -hmm. and their reactions and how they fit into tissues and organisms. It's really made progress in, in aging research possible. That's fantastic. And you are a renowned expert in, in the field of cellular senescence. And speaking of that, synolytic drugs are a proposed way to clear out senescent cells and seem to be beneficial in mice. But the question is, do senescent cells work the same way in humans as they do in mice? It's a good question. It's an excellent question. I would say chances are the answer is yes, mm -hmm. but we don't know that definitively yet. So, for example, in my lab we always start with human cells and then we look at mouse cells, and then if those two cell types behave the same way, then we look at the mouse. So we can right. hope to extrapolate to humans, but in fact it's still very early days, and as you know, the first senolytic drugs have just entered clinical trials for humans, yes. so we have a ways to go. We will see, hopefully yes. soon. Yes. Um, so what kinds of age-related diseases might be potentially addressed with senolytics? Well, if you believe a mouse can predict what happens in the human, um, it's, it's an amazing array of age-related diseases. Everything from neurodegeneration uh -huh. to cancer, late-life cancer. So I think if, if we're correct and the mouse models are correct, they're going to be a, a huge array of age-related diseases. Everything from the brain to your kidneys to your joints to your heart. Um, That's great. Yeah. Just let's definitely hope that it is yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of synolytics, a lot of current generation synolytics are repurposed cancer drugs, such as Navitoclax and Desitinib. Why is it that cancer drug has synolytic effects? Well, think about what a cancer cell needs to do to mm -hmm. survive. It needs to avoid death. And we know that senescent cells are also uh, somewhat stable. They usually use the same mechanisms to avoid cell death so that they're stable in the body. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference between cancer and a senescent cell, a cancer cell and a senescent cell, is if you want to cure cancer, you have to kill every cancer cell because one cancer cell can go on and form a tumor. Mm -hmm. That's not the case in the case of senescent cells. In the mouse models, we kill maybe between 60 and 80 percent of the senescent cell, and there's already improvement in health span. So it's a different threshold between cancer and senescence, and those anti-cancer drugs failed because of the very, very high bar that's needed to All eradicate right. cancer. Okay, very fascinating. Um, some research also suggests that some naturally occurring plant flavonoids, such as quercetin, apigenin, piperlongumin, and physetin, might also influence the SASP or are actually senolytics. What do you think of the potential of such compounds? Well, um, the data are mixed. Mm -hmm. um, some, for some of these compounds, the act of killing senescent cells looks pretty good. For others, it looks more like these compounds might suppress the SASP, the secretory phenotype. Mm -hmm. the, the advantage of killing a senescent cell is that it's gone for some period of time until those senescent cells can build up again, whereas if you suppress the SASP, as soon as you take away the compound, the cells start secreting the blood. Right. And so... So it's more it's, of a stopgap. Right? Yes, yes. Okay, I understand. Um, 
as you were mentioning, I believe, senescent cells use various pro-survival pathways to evade apoptosis, such as um, BCL2, P53, and FOXO4, which is why no single senolytic agent has yet been able to remove senescent cells across the board. What are your thoughts on a senolytic cocktail therapy that hits all these pathways at once? So, it's likely. Um, I do want to point out, though, that I think where the research needs to go is, is to really understand the heterogeneity among senescent mm -hmm. cells. It may be that we don't need as much of a cocktail if the damaging senescent cells have something in common. But as you know, there are good things that senescent cells do as well, and we don't want to eliminate those good cells. So right now there's a big push in the field, certainly in my lab and many other labs, to understand the heterogeneity so that the drugs can be more specific. Eventually there probably might be a cocktail, um, and even then we're going to have to exercise a little bit of caution, right? Of you don't want to take a senolytic before you go to surgery. Yes, I, I heard about that. That's not a good idea. No. <laughs> Um, senescent cells are not present in younger individuals for very long, so why does the immune system stop clearing out these problem cells beyond about age 50? Yeah, so the short answer is we don't know the answer to that. Okay. We don't know whether senescent cells are made at a higher rate in older individuals, whether they're cleared at a slower rate due to the immune system okay. not catching up. Um, or some combination of both, and it could easily be some combination of both. We're also just beginning to understand how the immune system identifies and targets these cells, and how those senescent cells can also evolve mechanisms, much like cancer cells, to avoid the immune system. Mm -hmm. So these are very early days, and the whole immune component is something that we need to understand much better. Of course. Um, what do you think about the proposal of boosting or rejuvenating the immune system to help clear senescent cells? Could work, but I will remind you that um, there are some anti-cancer therapies that have the same idea, uh -huh. and there have been some big surprises. For example, some patients on immunotherapy for cancer are developing type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, oh, wow. autoimmune That's disease. Surprising. Yes. So, you know, the immune system is this very finely tuned system, and we don't know as much about the immune system as we should. I would be very cautious about tweaking the immune system one way or the other. It is a dangerous thing, for sure. Yeah, or could be. Um, you mentioned before that synolytics are currently in human trials, particularly they are in human trials with unity. Is there anything that you could tell about uh, tell us about uh, how things are going with that? So I believe this is public knowledge. You can find it on their website. Mm -hmm. I believe they're recruiting for phase two. So I, I think phase one went fine, meaning nobody dies, nobody's life fell off, and so that's good. <laughs> So as you know, phase one is, is more about safety, mm -hmm. and so phase two I think will be starting soon. I think like second quarter was of 2019 that they were hoping to release yes, the information. Just, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, Absolutely. yes, we all are. Yeah. Right, and as a last question, I would like to ask you if there is a question that you would like us to ask you, like you know, something that people never ask you but you would really like to answer. So is there anything mm. like that? In that case, what is that question? And we're happy to hear your answer to that. <laughs> um, maybe the important question is, what is the distinction between aging and death? Mm -hmm. Because as you know, there are some people who believe that aging is programmed, that mm -hmm. it was selected to make room for the new generation. Yes. And I think it's definitely true that in some cases, in some species, death is selected. You know, salmon, they swim upstream, they spawn, they die. Mm -hmm. And that's programmed. Um, aging is something else, and I cannot think of a way it could be programmed. For example, I can't imagine how evolution would select for a deteriorating joint, or a deteriorating brain, or a deteriorating heart, or whatever. That's aging. And that's what we're hoping to avoid. Death, I think, it's inevitable. 
possibly, but like I, I, I tend to agree with, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to uh, take sides, but I tend to agree with you. I have a hard time imagining that deterioration would be selected for. Yeah. But again, that's just my two cents. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, that, that's about all that we wanted to ask you. I'm, I'm very happy that you could find the time to talk to us. It was great uh, and talking I hope to you. you. Thank yeah. you. I'm hoping you will enjoy the conference as much as we are. I'm, I bet I will. Thank you. Thank you.